Hey guys and welcome back to part 2 of the CSGO crate opening system. In the previous video, part 1, which you will need to go watch, what we did was we set up the crate widget itself, added all of our items into the crate and shuffled them so that in a random order as you'll see here, so every time the player opens it, we're going to have the items in a random order inside of the crate. In today's video, what we're going to be going over is actually opening this crate so that what we do is we can actually open the crate with an animation and it will choose a different item each time. Uh, you probably don't have the open button at the moment, don't worry about that. That's just because I'm recording this part in advance. But yeah, this is what you should have. And if, again, if you haven't watched part one, definitely go watch that before doing this part. So without further ado, let's open up our crate open widget again, go to the event graph and get on with this code. So now let's set up the code for actually opening it. So again, what's gonna happen now is it's gonna be in a random order, but let's set up the code for opening. So actually what I'll also do, is I'm going to actually show you what it looks like at the moment. So if I open up my character blueprint, what I've got is the code here is just to put the widget on screen at the beginning of the game, as that's how it works for me. So if we were to play this, what we'll see is that these are going to be in a random order each and every time. That works perfectly and looks great. So again, let's now open it up. So let's go back to the designer and let's add in a button onto our canvas panel here. And this is going to be our open button. Let's add some text onto that as well, like that. Then let's move this button to where we want it. So I just want it down here. Let's make it a bit bigger as well. I think that's going to be good. And let's just anchor it down here too. So I think that's going to be good for me. Let me just rename this from not text block to instead open. And we'll change the color to be black. So it's nice and easy to see. So now we have our open button here as well. Again, customize that to get it looking perfect for how you want it. Now what we're going to do when we open it is we want to play an animation for all of this sliding along. So what we're going to do is very easily we can actually create widget animations in here. So you'll see in the bottom left I have animations and timeline. If you don't have those, go up to window at the top, click animations and click timeline so they have a tick next to them and they should appear down here. It might be somewhere else for you but I believe down here is the default spot. So let's select our horizontal box as that's got all of our images in. Hit the plus animation, name this slide or open, whatever makes sense for you. Select that animation, add a track, add the horizontal box, add a track on the horizontal box, and we're going to add a transform so we can then move it. Open up the transform and open up the translation as that's basically location. And you'll see we have the X and Y here. I'm gonna extend this to be one second long. You can choose how long you want it to be, but one second is gonna be good for me. And I'm also gonna do some maths with the length of this later on. So keeping it as one second just makes it nice and easy. At the very beginning of the timeline, we also want the positions of zero and zero as our translation. Move the timeline all the way to the end and basically move the X to be where you want it to be. So all the way to the left or right, whichever way you want it to rotate. So for the size I've got, I found that minus 3,750 was the best position for me for this animation so you'll see that it's now going to just move to the left like that obviously you can get this to look however you like but for me that's going to be perfect that's all i want it to do we don't need to have it going back because we only want it to be rotating and sliding in one direction what i'm also going to do is with the horizontal box still selected add another animation and i'm going to name this stop slide or select item or finish whatever you want so basically the slide is going to be rotating it the stop slide is going to be finishing it to actually select our item. So we're going to select that, add a track, horizontal box, add a track on horizontal box being transform, open that up, get translation the same way we just did before. Now what we're going to do here is I'm going to instead make this one a little bit longer. So I'm going to make it 1.75 seconds long, or maybe actually 1. 1.9, let's say. Obviously choose what you want. Again, the beginning is going to be here and the end I'm going to set to be minus 1670 and so what's going to happen is in this example it's going to select eight so it's going to be there obviously you can have an image under here to actually have a pointer for which one you want to select but for me the middle one makes the most sense and for me in my case this is the exact middle for the images and the sizes i have obviously choose that for what you want but again so what's going to happen is it's going to slowly just stop there working perfectly for me that's how i want it to look so we'll compile and save that so now we've got the animation set up as well. So we've got it sliding. Let's just do that there. And we've got the stop sliding as well like this. So now let's actually set up using these animations to actually move this in game as well when we press open. So let's select our button again. 
scroll down on the right until we have the on clicked event and we're going to get that like so. Out of this we're going to hold down O left click to get a do once because we only want the player to be able to open it once until it's obviously finished playing the animation. So that's why we've got a do once there. And out of this we want to then play the animation. So very simply we can go under the variables, open the animations tab and get slide, drag out this and just play animation. Very simple like this. So now here you can obviously do how many times you want it to play. So if you want it to play five times, just add it in there. However, I want it to be quicker and then slowly slow down each time it plays it, which is why I said I'm going to do some maths. So we don't have to recreate loads and loads of different animations. We can just do it here. So this first one, I want to play at 2.5 times the speed. So playback speed of 2.5. And obviously I'm doing it for one second. So that would then be 0.4 seconds because you just do one divided by 2.5. So after this, we're going to hold down D, left click to get a delay, connecting that in there with the duration being how long this animation is going to take. So again, I set it to 1 at 2.5 times the speed is 0.4 for me. So that's why I kept it 1 so I can do some nice simple maths. So again, set this up to be whatever it is for you, but maybe you might choose to do the same timings I've got. Then I'm going to select the slide, play animation and a delay, Control C, Control V to duplicate it, putting that here. For me this time the, the playback speed is just going to be 2, so the duration is going to be 0 0.5, because obviously double the speed of 1 second is half a second. Let's do this again, for me this time the playback speed is going to be 1.5, so the duration is going to be 0 0.66. It has actually 0 0.66 recurring, but the closest we can get is 0 0.66. Then Control C, Control V once again, you can obviously do this as many times as you like, but if you want it to look like how I got it in the beginning of the video, do this. This is just what I think is going to look good for me. The speed of this one, I want to be 1. So the duration, I'm then going to set as 1 second, as that's how long it is. But what I might actually do is have this one play twice. So I'm going to have number of loops to play as 2. And the duration, I'm then obviously just going to have as 2 seconds, because it's playing it twice, so it's going to take twice as long. Then after this, I want to play the stop slide animation. So we're going to get stop slide, like this. And then we're going to play animation, connecting that into completed there. And the playback speed I'll leave as one. Hold down D, left click to get a delay at the end. And this is so that we can then restart the do once so we can do it again. And the duration for me was 1.9 seconds. That's how long this animation was. Completed of this delay, like I say, is gonna go all the way back into the reset of the do once. So we can then redo this code again and open another crate once we've finished opening this one. Obviously you can maybe extend this delay at the end if you want so the player can't open another one straight away, they have to wait. Or you can obviously have it so if they have a money system, you can see if they have enough money to open one, which you'll probably want to do at the very beginning here. But that is this code done for opening it. So again, what we're doing is we're just playing an animation each and every time for it to be sliding along until we get the end and we'll play the stop sliding animation. Compile, save that. However, what you'll notice is there will be a small issue when we go to play this. So if we press open, it is working, it is doing the animation how we want. But obviously it's going through the whole thing, so there's nothing on the left side, or the right side, sorry, over here. It's just gonna constantly go like that. So what we want to do is essentially just duplicate the horizontal box images so that we have it going from left to right perfectly without any empty space like that. So let's go all the way back up here, and we're gonna be doing that code at the very beginning here, but let's also go to the designer first. If we open up our horizontal box, select all of our images, Control C, select the horizontal box, control V. We're going to just duplicate them in there. So now if we zoom out, you'll see we've got the same thing going twice like this. You don't need to rename these if you don't want because we're going to remove them anyway. It's just essentially so the computer knows that we also have these spaces available to be used, which is obviously what we want. So let's deselect that, compile, save, go back to the event graph and off of event construct, we're going to disconnect this, or disconnect it there and we're going to do some code beforehand. So out of event construct, we're going to go into a for loop. So a for loop down here, not for each loop, just a for loop. So the first index being the last one that you have. So what I've got is I have 15 different items in here. Well, I have 30, but I only want to have 15. So that's going to be zero because we start counting at zero. So essentially just take one off. So 15th item will be 14 because we have 15 images we start counting at zero, so that'll be 14. So for me, 15, first index is 14, and I obviously have this doubled, so I have 30 items, so that will then be 29. So we want to go from index 14 to 29. 
And what we want to do with this is we want to remove that child or that image. So we're going to again get the horizontal box like this. And out of this, we're going to get child at with the index going from the for loop there. So we want to get the child from the current index which we are looking at from the for loop here. And the return value is going to just be remove child with the loop body going to there like so. So again, what we're doing is we're getting the current child at that position and removing it so we know we can have a space there but we currently don't have one. And the completed of the for loop is going to go into the for each loop there to, to just continue with the code as we had it before. And I'm going to again comment this, naming this allow use of all space in horizontal box. What we also want to do is underneath this right click, add a custom event and name this reset, connecting that into the for loop. And that's just so we can actually open the box multiple times, which we'll see in a second. So to do that, we then want to go all the way back down to the open, move the button out and just call the event reset. And it'll be a call function, so it'll probably be up at the top. Uh, there we go, call function reset. So every time we want to open the crate, we're going to reset it because if we don't do that, it will be the same each and every time. They'll be in the same order, in the same places, and we'll get the same item, which we obviously don't want. So if we compile and save that, we've got an error. So let's have a look at what that is. Uh, we forgot to add a target into the remove child. That's the horizontal box. Compile, save, no errors, and this should now be the code working perfectly for us. So let's hit play and test out. You see we have a random order, do it again, we've got another random order, hit open, and the animations are going from left to right, it's sliding like this, and we're going to get a random one, so this time we got one. If we open it, it should be different, so we shouldn't get one, we should get a different one, which in this case is three. So again, like I said at the beginning of the video, it doesn't look amazing, but you can obviously tweak it to get it looking a lot better for you. But I think that'll be it for this video, so we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so we've got a crate opening system in Unreal Engine 4 in which we have random items inside of our crate which we have added and again they'll be in a random order each and every time as you can see here and we can open it with an animation of them sliding across the screen and it's selecting a random and different one each and every time. For example we got 9 there which could be anything for you so it could be a weapon skin or something and this one we have got 12 so again this works perfectly. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.